Hey, are you longing to further decrease the incentive to keep playing your new file? Well, then I have the part three for you. Let's get into it. Collecting the necessary tree turds to get all the inventory expansions can be one of the most tedious things in this game. Luckily, we have a solution. This method relies on us not having collected a specific Korok seed. There technically are others you can do this with, but none as easy as this that I know of right now. Head to the Akala Ancient Tech Lab and get on top of it. This Korok right here is the one we're going to abuse. If you have in fact collected this seed, watch the video in the info tab right here for a tutorial on the other, more tedious one you can do this with. Before doing anything, save your game. We're going to get a seed from this Korok without making them appear, allowing us to keep getting more. To do that, stand behind this lounge chair, face toward the magical Korok confetti, and hold ZL. Back away, and press A a couple of frames after. If done right, the camera will appear near the edge of the mountain, and we'll get our seed without the Korok greeting us. If done wrong, the Korok will appear normally, and you gotta reload your save. It might take some practice. There's always a chance that you'll mess up, so it'll be most efficient for you to manually save often. Maybe once every two seeds you get, without the Korok appearing of course. Though you can change that frequency of saving to whatever you're comfortable with, based on your success rate. It took me around 16 minutes to get 55 Korok seeds. The amount of seeds needed to get all inventory upgrades is... 441. Okay, yes, this is a pretty dang fast way to get Korok seeds, but I ain't about to sit here doing this for two hours straight. Feel free to do that yourselves, but there's another way to get max inventory slots with just these 55 seeds. It's time to put part two's lessons to use. For this exploit, it is required for us to have not completed Eventide Island. Let me explain how this works. When you enter the range of Eventide Island while standing on dry land, the challenge starts, and all of your equipment and materials are taken from you. Except, taken would be the wrong word. What actually happens is that your current inventory gets saved for the game to reload when you complete the challenge or leave, then that inventory gets swapped out with another that has no equipment or materials. However, you might notice that in this swapped inventory, you still have all of your key items. It's not that these were ignored, but rather the swapped inventory copies and gives itself exactly what you had in your key items inventory. So say for example, if we were to, I don't know, somehow escape the island with this temporary inventory and spend all of these Korok seeds? If we then cancelled our participation in the Even Tide Island challenge, we would get the contents of our old inventory back, which still has all the seeds we just spent. You might be thinking, easy! Just activate Moon Jump, set our respawn coordinates right by Hestu, go to Even Tide Island, drown ourselves, and then spend the seeds. And you'd be right, it would be that easy. If Hestu would frickin' let us spend seeds when we don't have a shirt on, he gets too excited over the sight of my perfect chest to do business. We'd need to go buy a shirt to spend seeds, but fast traveling is disabled during the Eventide Island challenge. Listen, I get it. My body is captivating, and that's a privilege. But being the hottest twink in all the land doesn't always make life easier. And this is unfortunately one of those instances where we will have to put in more work because of it. 
Here are the things we will need to do this. 55 Korok Seeds, a registered horse, the blue flame minigame available to us, and to open Chaskeda Shrine. Or, if you have the DLC, we can use the travel medallion instead to make things go quicker. We already have our 55 Korok Seeds if you followed the last trick, and we have a registered horse if you followed part 1. Also, let's go steal Hestu's maracas too, since we're going to have to get those anyway. To get Hestu's maracas, just fast travel to Kakariko Village, follow the road south, Defeat this camp of enemies. And open the chest. Now, to get the blue flame minigame available to us, we need to have lit the Akala Lab furnace and talked to Robbie. Head inside the Akala Lab to grab this torch if you need one, and then go to the blue flame. Okay, now it's time for bonus glitch. Bonus glitch. Bonus Give it up for bonus glitch. You thought I was just gonna let you normally light the furnace? Get out of town. Get out. I'm gonna teach you weapon smuggling because that lets us avoid this long-winded path. Just follow these steps. Equip your torch, a shield, and the remote bomb rune. Spawn the bomb in front of you, and then unsheathe your torch and shield. Press A to pick up the bomb, and then immediately take off your shield. Throw the bomb, and now the torch is stuck to your hand. You can run, ride, climb, and paraglide without putting it away. Pressing Y will cancel this glitch, so don't do that until you're done with it. This makes lighting the furnace a breeze. Just light your torch, paraglide to the other side, and climb up. Fun fact, the blue flame has the unique property of automatically blowing up your remote bombs if it makes contact, unlike normal flames. This means that Smash Ultimate got this wrong. Richter's holy water should blow up Link's bomb, and not Simon's. Sakurai, what the fu- Anyway, once you lit the furnace, Go talk to Robbie, and he'll give you three ancient arrows, completing his quest. Now, Aya at the East Akala Stable should let us play the Blue Flame minigame. While we're here, if you have the DLC and haven't gotten the travel medallion yet, let's go grab it from the Lome Labyrinth Island. Getting over there can be a pain, so let's just do a Kibako launch. Go find these three wooden boxes by the Ancient Tech Lab. Equip your cube bomb rune, and place one against the box. Get on top of the wooden box, and stand on the edge opposite of the bomb. Then, detonate it. Pull out your paraglider, and you're on your way. This technique works specifically for wooden boxes, as the name implies. Kibako is just wooden box in Japanese. With this knowledge, you can start to view all wooden boxes in this game as launch pads. Just drop down to the bottom left of the main room, follow this path to complete the maze, and enter the shrine. Complete the shrine as normal, and then the basement to the maze will be open. Drop down, go to the end, and then grab your travel medallion.
Now, we gotta open Chaskeda's shrine so we can teleport to it. Not necessarily if you got the travel medallion, but it would still be nice to open. If you have at least two and one-fifth wheels of stamina, you can just paraglide down to there from the Hatano Tech Lab. If you do have the travel medallion, just one more step. Go near Eventide Island and get on top of these rocks. Place down your travel medallion on them, outside the range of starting the quest. Alright, we have everything set up. Let's do this. Go activate Moon Jump so we can Moon Jump Wrong Warp. Now, we are at a crossroad because of you non-DLC having fools. If your team travel medallion, as in you have it, fast travel to it. By doing so, as long as Moon Jump is active, your respawn coordinates are stuck here, even if you fast travel to some other location. If your team Chaskeda, as in you don't have the travel medallion, fast travel to Chaskeda Shrine. Your respawn coordinates are stuck here, at least until you fast travel somewhere else or reload a save. Now we need to get to East Akala Stable. Team Travel Medallion, you can just go ahead and fast travel to there. Team Chaskeda, you gotta get there any other way, as fast traveling would change your respawn coordinates. Grab this Korok Leaf and use this boat. I'll teach you how to sail fast. The first important factor for sailing fast is your position on the boat. The sweet spot for sailing in water is pretty much just hugging the mast or decently behind it. The second is your frequency of gusts. As a two-handed weapon, the Korok Leaf has a two-hit combo. The first swing sends out a decently strong gust of wind, and same with the second swing, except it comes with a crap ton of end lag. Ew, what the so basically, we just want to avoid using the second swing. You can time your Y presses to only ever get the first swing, like so. Alternatively, if you have a shield, you can switch back and forth from it to keep cancelling any attack animation as long as you're not actually hitting anything. So you could use the second swing, just cancel it once it comes out with a shield switch. Or, you can do that with charged attacks for extra strong gusts of wind. Hold Y, release, switch shields as soon as the gust of wind appears, repeat. With these methods, you can get to the Akala region relatively quickly. When Moon Jump is active, there's a small chance we'll just fly off the boat for some reason. But we can hide in front of the mast to try to prevent that. If you do fly off and land in the water, you should probably fast travel back to Chaskeda and try again. Going the rest of the way without being able to recover stamina is a huge pain. It should take around four minutes to get to East Akala Stable, which isn't too bad considering that we're traveling from one side of the map to the other. Also, before anyone mentions it, Yes, I am aware that the lobster shirt makes the Korak Leaf's gusts more powerful against rafts. Though in my tests, it doesn't really increase the top speed, it just boosts the acceleration. But we're not going to use that, because if Team Chaskeda had the DLC, we wouldn't be sailing here in the first place. Once you pile drive through these strips of land and reach the mainland, let's paraglide the rest of the way there. Sorry for the wait, Team Travel Medallion. Our next step, play the Blue Flame minigame. Though we can't do it while it's raining, so just rest at the stable if it is. That should change the weather. Talk to Aya and pay her bullshit horse handling fee to start. 
Once you can move, paraglide your way over to this body of water and then drown yourself. We will be placed at our stuck respawn points. Team Travel Medallion, just jump forward a bit to activate the Eventide Island quest. Team Chaskeda, sail your boat over there before the time runs out. This boat was going really slow because the wind was going against me. Keep in mind you might run into that. Once the creepy old chica takes all your clothes, go grab this boat oar, this tree branch, and a material that we can hold just in case we need these for moon jump nonsense. And then wait out the timer. Aya will summon us back. After disappointing her, there's a chance that the creepy old Chica will ask if we're done with his challenge. If he does, say no. He'll take you back to Eventide Island, but that's okay because we re-enabled fast travel because we played a minigame. We're now free to roam around Hyrule and do pretty much anything with Eventide's temporary inventory. Any key items we lose in this state will be returned to us later. Fast travel to Hatano Village. We need to go buy the shirt. The warm doublet is the cheapest option we have. We're going to have to buy it once each time we do this, so later we'll have to do something for the shop to restock. Now, fast travel to where Hestu is. If you've yet to interact with him, go to Kakriko Village, follow the road south, and find him on the side of the road. give him his maracas, and spend as much seeds as you can before he has to leave. You don't need to put on the shirt until he's at Korok Forest. Once he says he needs to go home, Fast travel to Korok Forest, put your shirt on, and continue spending all your seeds here. Once you're out of seeds, save and reload your game, and that will cancel our participation for Eventide Island. This returns our old inventory to us, including the 55 seeds we just spent on these shiny new inventory expansions. We also officially get to keep Hestu's maracas, since we gave those to him while we had the temporary inventory. You can use this exploit to keep any key item you want. There's no real advantage for doing so, but it might be fun to collect them all. Anyway, we don't have all inventory upgrades yet, so let's keep doing this. Before anything, go inside the Great Deku Tree and rest at the cooking pot. This will let Hatano restock the warm doublet for us to buy again. Team Chaskeda, go teleport back to that shrine. 
since we changed our respawn coordinates by teleporting to Korok Forest. Then, go sail to East Akala Stable again. Team Travel Medallion, just teleport to East Akala Stable. Your respawn coordinates still haven't changed. Once there, start the Blue Flame minigame, drown yourself, go to Eventide, grab the tree branch, boat ore, and a material, wait out the timer, Decline skeezy old man if you gotta. Fast travel to Hatano. Buy your shirt. Fast travel to Korok Forest. Spend all your seeds. Save and reload. And then rest at the cooking pot. Easy! Just keep repeating these steps until you've gotten all inventory upgrades, which should take nine times of doing this. Or maybe not so easy and I've just convinced you to spend two and a half hours collecting this seed instead. Sorry. And that's all I have for part three. But before I go, I have a confession. This whole Ruin Your New File series is just an excuse to cover a couple of glitches I hadn't yet. Glitches that I intend to use for some challenge videos I had planned. If I cover them beforehand, I won't get a bunch of questions on how to perform them. I probably still will, but I can at least redirect them to here. Anyway, I'll get to those challenges eventually. For now, see you next time in Part 4.